Hi everybody, back with another review. Uh, thoughts on Stephen Wilson and To The Bone. There we go. I'll leave that up there, shall I, so you don't have to see me. That's, uh, I think that's much more preferable. Half-naked geek's torso rather than a fully clothed old geek's torso. Um, to The Bone, I, as you can see, I had the special edition, the full booklet. Wallapaloos and things there. Uh, this one comes with like um, demos and unreleased tracks, uh, Blu ray, a DVD version, and I even get a little uh, extra song on mine called Antisocial. Um, but this, this is a simpler, a simpler, simpler review because I'm just reviewing the basic album. There it is, the back, back of the booklet and the front of the booklet. Um, Basically, got it for a birthday. Oh, oh, oh! Last year. Um, so uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get it. Um, so to the bone, Stephen Wilson. Uh, my history with Stephen Wilson. I followed a bit of Porcupine Tree. I know a few albums. I've got a couple of albums of Porcupine Tree. Um, I've got all of his um, solo output. Um, one album in that solo output list. I dislike intensely. Um, the rest range from really good to awesome. Um, to the bone, most of, pretty much most of last year I loved it to bits. Um, it's tailed off a little bit in the last uh, couple of months I have to admit. Coming back to listen to it for this review, I found things I'm going like, yeah, I'm a little bored now. Um, Basically, to the bone is his is his is his, is his, is his pop album. Uh, really, it's uh, basically he looks back to the past in most of his in a lot of his stuff. You know, takes the stuff that's uh, influenced his life. And on this one, he wanted to be more commercial. He wanted to uh, hit the highlight of uh, the commercial top notch in the seventies and eighties. And that's basically where he's put most of his songs. And what this has done is has created uh, a huge polarization in his fan base, it seems. Um, people either love To The Bone or they hate To The Bone. If you can see my hand, nope. Um, and it's a, it's a weird thing. You can't like a few songs on there and dislike a few others. Um, you can't think it's a good album, but um, you have to either think it's bad, oops, or it's good. Um, it's very strange. People just uh, are very straight. You, you have to hate the whole album. And sometimes there are albums out there I do dislike a whole album of. Um, but most of the time, there's, always, there's sometimes a good song here and there on an album. It's like uh, when you hear a promo song for something, it's like, I've got to get the album. You get the album, it's like the promo song is it. Um, and the rest of the album's a bit ugh. Um, to the Bone seems to uh, not be that for a lot of the uh, fans of Stephen Wilson out there. They're all. They're, they're all either hating it or loving it. I loved it, loved it. For pretty much all of last year, I loved it. Um, and now it's gone a little a little stale, but then I've had it for, you know, nearly a year. And well, I've had it a year, a year. And uh, it's no longer what it was. Um, and I can now go, oh. So if it didn't review straight away last year when I had it, if I had a channel, I didn't. It would have been a totally different view to this one. So, what can I say about Stephen Wilson if you've not already heard uh, anything about him or anything about him? Basically, each of his albums that he's released as a solo artist have been different from each other. We've had uh, more of an electronic or industrial sort of influence on his first one. Then he went all very, very early 70s on uh, Grace for Drowning, which was like, uh, no. Um, then... Uh, he mixed that up with much more um, modern prox ideas with the classic 70s sound and uh, Raven refused to sing. Um, then he went much more uh, commercial in parts but uh, much more powerful as well with uh, Hank and Otto Rays which was stunning. And then we're on to this one. And he's also released a um, what we could class as an EP even though it's not an EP of um, covers. It's an album of covers, let's face it, an album of covers, um, which are quite interesting. Anyway, to the bone, let's get on with it. What does it offer? Basically, if you're looking for an album that's cohesive in a single style, 
you're not going to get it. Cohesive in a sound, Stephen Wilson has a sound and it does flow throughout the album. His style, his sound is there. Um, but the style of each song varies, varies very much indeed. Um, it kicks off with the album title, um, which is good solid hard rock with funky elements, um, but eventually it breaks into more traditional Stephen Wilson uh, atmospheric prog territory towards the end. Um, I think it's a very good start to the album. Um, then you get Nowhere Now, good solid commercial rocker. It's really decent, it's really decent. Um, and then we're into Pariah. Pariah, maybe the first one that people have heard. Ooh, I love Pariah, love Pariah. It's a gentle little song, um, fairly down in its, in its subject matter, but then it hits a huge crashing crescendo at the end, which is just wonderful to behold, wonderful. Um, is it representative of the album? No, but then maybe none of them are. Um, like I say, representative of his sound rather than the style. Then um, we kick up into um, Same Asylum as before. Now this is where I'm starting to, I'm more weary of the album. It uh, feels a bit superfluous after the first few songs and after its first few listens to it. That's when I first heard it, it's yeah, I like it, yeah. And now it's a bit like, oh, I, can, I can listen to it, I like it. I like it, still like it. But it's not something I click on to. It's not like, I've got to listen to a Steve Wilson song. I'm going to the To The Bone album. Shall I put Same Solid? No. There's, low, there's better tracks on there than that. Um, then we hit proper prog territory, Refuge. Potentially Refuge is his best song on the album. It has a, a, gentle, a gentle opening that swirls into a beautiful, epic, powerful central point and then swirls back down uh, into a more gentle closing. After then, after he suddenly hit the heights of uh, it's hey, it's back to being his proggy stuff, it's back to being his proggy stuff, he goes full pop rock um, with his attempt at ELO style commerciality uh, with Permanenting. Permanenting is the big polarising song from this album. Loads of people have moaned about it loads of people have defended it. I think it's okay. If I played the whole album, if I'm going to go, should I skip something? I wouldn't skip it. It's it's all right, it's a bit fun, but it's not something I would click onto at all. Even though I would say it's his attempt to be ELO, ELO had a lot more depth in the songs I've heard by ELO anyway. A lot more depth, a lot more uh, complexity to their sound. Um, Permanenting is sort of the shallow frisson of an ELO song, really. It's it's just there. It's just a hello, and it's bye, gone. Um, it could have been so much more, but it's not. Um, then we have Blank Tapes, which is a gentle, soft little number, a couple of minutes long. Doesn't do anything for me. Didn't do anything for me from the start, to be fair. It's just there. It's not interesting to me at all. Um, People Who Eat Darkness has a punky rock and roll feel to it. A uh, bit of 80s sound really. Um, you could say it's like the Clash meets prog rock, sort of. Or prog rock as it was in the 80s maybe. Uh, it's one of those. It's one of those you can take it or you can leave it. Um, just talking of leaving it, Song of I, Electronica style stuff from the new a new wave style uh, attempt oh, horrible song horrible um fire next up uh, no, obviously finally uh next up we have detonation detonation is again a big huge prog epic it is the longest song at nine minutes it starts off stunningly well i really really love detonation until we get halfway and then he just goes into lounge core jazz um really um it's boring the last half is just boring. Um, I've heard, seen some people online loving it to bits because they love that style. I just loathe that style. I think it's just lazy. It's dull. But like I said, the first four to five minutes, wow. I can listen to that song and then when it segues into the tedium uh, that it goes into, I just then skip. It's that boring. You can fall asleep to it, but not in a good way. Um, finally, Song of Unborn. 
This is a beautiful traditional Stephen Wilson song and is a stunning ending to the album, which you have to admit is a very mixed bag of an album. Basically, the album, the songs on the album, most of, the, most of them from the very start hit you really well and stay with you for quite a reasonable amount of time, but then they don't become classics in your head. Pariah, that's the only one, uh, really. Refuge is another one I can listen to quite happily. The rest, you can say, take them or leave them. Um, and a couple of them you definitely want to leave because you don't like them at all. It's still a far better album than many uh, so-called, well, if you put it in quotes, you've got to put it in quotes. Purists uh, would have you believe. Um, it's a good, solid album. Is it his best? No. For me, Hank Cannot Erase is his best. And before that, Raven That Refused to Sing. Um, this is a little lighter, a little shallower, dare I say it. Um, like I say, got, it was one of my favourite albums of last year. Um, but... Um, after a year of it, uh, it, I don't really go back to it very often. I go back to uh, Hank Cannot Erase and Raven Refuse to Sing a hell of a lot more. Um, this one's a little bit nah, now, which is a shame in many ways. I would say um, the start of last year, it would have been an eight or a nine for me. I really enjoyed it. I was like, oh, how dare you people out there say, no, it's not very good. Um, but on retrospect, it's not as good as I thought it was. Um, it's still a decent decent album I would give it uh, a 7 I would say there's enough songs on there to give it a 7 it's a, it's a dodgy 7 it could be 6.5 but it's a, a dodgy 7 really um, good solid progressive in parts poppy in other parts good if you like Stephen Wilson or um, if you've heard a couple of songs by Stephen Wilson and want to get a nice ease in if you don't want all the real prog melting pot to overflow, if you want some nice simple stuff as well, this is a very nice simple album to get started with. Um, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope I got some of it right. There'll be people will be going like, I disagree. And there'll be people will be going like, I agree. And I won't know which part they agree with or disagree with. Maybe they'll be the same people who hate and love to the bone. I'm like right in the middle. Like I say, start of the year, start of last year. Wow, I would have been like, no, oh, amazing. Now I'm like, yeah, it's not as good as his other stuff. It's not his worst album. Um, like I say, he's got five solo albums. I'm not going to count the um, the cover. Five solo albums. I would say it's my third favorite overall. There you go. That's that's. See you for another one. Bye.